Welcome back. You're watching the News at 10 live from Channel's Television, broadcasting from Lagos. Let's quickly shift to our Buja studios now with Malpe Ogun Yusuf, who's taking us through a couple of more stories. Malpe. Hello, Gimba. Welcome to our Buja studios. A governorship aspirant on the All Progressives Congress platform in River State, Senator Magnus Abbey, will reject the outcome of Saturday's election if the party does not adopt a direct primaries option. Senator Abe said as much when he spoke at a campaign rally held in Bori in Kana local government area of the state. <laughs> At the Bori police station field in River State, loyalists and members of the All Progressives Congress gather in their numbers, defying the weather. Father, we decree that today there shall be no famine again. They are here to show their allegiance to Magnus Abe, the party's aspirant, who is vying to occupy the governor's office. The event is also an avenue for party members to bear their minds on issues such as the mode of conducting the election, with many kicking against indirect primaries. Anybody that is telling you anything about indirect primary, tell him that it cannot happen in River State. We will resist it with our blood, and that we will stand for direct primaries. And that is all we know in APC River State. The agenda of the civil River State has failed. Most people will decide who is their governor. One man cannot decide for River State. One man cannot decide for all of us. If you think you are popular, why are you afraid of direct families? The man of the moment steps up and also states his position on the matter. We met at a meeting and said that there will be direct primaries. And the national chairman said that there will be direct primaries anywhere where there are issues that will make the outcome of the primaries legally contestable. And the first example that he himself cited was the example of River State. But as soon as they appointed Amechi DG again and DG again, everything changed because the man has now become bigger than the party. I will not accept it. September the 29th is the date set for the All Progressives Congress governorship primary elections and aspirants in various political parties continue to rally support from the electorate. The hope at the end of it all is that the exercise is free, fair and peaceful. While staying with electoral matters, election violence in Nigeria does not occur in a vacuum and focus should be on local and state level polls, which are the ones that record the highest incidence of violence. But as the observation of the United States Institute for Peace at the quarterly confab series of the Peace and Security Network in Abuja, according to the Institute, a historical quantitative and qualitative research conducted over the past 10 years in Nigeria, reveals that more conveners are needed to drive the conversation on peaceful elections. Our correspondent, Kela Megwa, reports. Prominent among the worst cases of election violence in Nigeria are the 2007 and 2011 elections. In almost all cases of election violence in the country, hate speech is identified as a major trigger, and that is the reason for this quarterly meeting. If the aspirants or candidates or the winners and losers, if they try to fall out of line, who pulls them back into line? It is the political parties. The organization is a network of over 600 civil society groups and non-state actors, including the United States Institute for Peace and Fund for Peace, who after years of research have come up with major reasons for election violence in the country and preferred solutions. More focus needs to be paid to the gubernatorial and local level elections. That's where more lives are lost, where the more lethal violence is happening. We need to pay more attention um, to those elections. We restricted ourselves to eight states, Adamawa, Ekiti, Plateau, Kaduna, Kano, Rivers, Lagos, and Abuja, the FCT. Now, 
Between 2015 and now, the key question we asked was, what has changed? Are there shifts? What are those shifts? And can these shifts help us understand the dynamics of our elections in terms of the relationship between violence and elections in Nigeria? It is important that this, um... According to the chairman of the Inter-Party Advisory Council, which is the umbrella body of registered political parties in Nigeria, parties have a lot to learn in handling the tension which the electoral process creates. And this attitude that most um, some operatives of some certain parties have, their parties have, uh, because you, um, you you tend to want to cheat the person and tell the person to go to court. So most times it is a straightforward and a very arrogant way of uh, igniting them um, tension and um, and um, um, heated debate and anger. <laughs> Now we know that the rights of a citizen can be restricted in the interest of national security. Many questions arise from this statement. First of all, when you say restricted, what do you mean? And secondly, how do you draw the line between restricting a person's human rights in the interest of national security and good old fashioned abuse of power? Kayla Magua, Channel Television News. And now to the court, the trial of a former governor of Abia State, Oji Kalu, over an alleged 7.65 billion naira fraud has been adjourned indefinitely. The trial judge, Justice Mohamed Idris, who was recently elevated to the Court of Appeal, sat on the case on the fiat issued to him by the President of the Court of Appeal, Justice Zainab Bulkachua. He recalled that the fiat to conclude the criminal case instituted against Kalu by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission will elapse on Friday the 29th of September. The judge stated that due to the delay in opening the defense after Kalu's no-case submission was dismissed on July the 31st, either counsel in the matter can appeal to the Court of Appeal for a fresh fiat. The EFCC is prosecuting Kalu, along with his former Commissioner for Finance, Ude Udeogo, and a company, Slock Nigeria Limited, for alleged fraud and money laundering. They had each pleaded not guilty to the charges. And that's all from Abuja. It's back to you, Gimba. Many thanks indeed, Mark. Brilliant. Now, with barely five months to Nigeria's general elections, many global investors are optimistic that the country remains a destination of choice, given its huge human and natural resources. This optimism was highlighted at the maiden Zenith Global Economic Forum, holding on the sidelines of the United Nations General Assembly in New York. Top players in the public and private sectors enumerated some of the positive strides that have taken place in Nigeria's economy in the past couple of years, all pointing to the fact that Nigeria is open for business. New York is playing host to the world's political and business leaders as various events are holding alongside the United Nations General Assembly. here in the middle of the town, all eyes are on Nigeria, the and the brain behind this event explains call, why. If people had called me and said, look, um, we are not government. Why don't we leave this for government to do? What's our interest? What's the deal here? They always think anything we do, there must be a deal. There's no really deal other than the deal for Nigeria. So that that clearly sets the tone for discussions the as the panel, which include a good number of top government officials, and, uh, take turns to highlight the factors that stand Nigeria that out in investment concentration. The business environment in Nigeria has received a lot of attention because when we set out, we decided that we must have a plan that is coherent and uh, that includes all the sectors of the economy. And we realized that there was a need to make sure that the plan is underpinned by the activities of the private sector. At the moment, in the last three years, we have increased power production from 4,000 megawatts to 7,000 megawatts. And this year, there is another 940 coming to be delivered. Next year, 1,115. And these are on grid supplies only. But where we have the big challenge now is at the 33 kV and 11 kV points where the transmission companies hand over the power to the distribution companies. And that's where the biggest investments have to go today. We've worked very hard to um, 
to achieve a sustainable and a stable exchange rate regime in Nigeria, whereas an investor, you can say, uh, can I predict what's the level of exchange rate, what kind of um, uh, uh, velocity of uh, variation do I see in exchange rate? You can you can have a six month, even even a one year view about exchange rate in Nigeria today, unlike before when it was fluctuating um, very very badly. More important, however, are the testimonies from successful um, business owners in Nigeria who gladly share their experiences. We have never had in our 57 years one problem with a CCI or capital exportation. Capital is sacrosanct in Nigeria. It has been for 57 years and there, there is, trust me on one thing, Nigeria is not only open for business, it is pro-business and pro-capital. For a country with 180 million people, 40, 44 million TV households, anyone who wants to invest in that sector has a great opportunity waiting for him. And those are the kind of stories we have to tell to let people know that the country is indeed a gold mine and indeed open for business. One of the key areas that drives corruption on the continent really has been transparency. Without a doubt, you know, embracing ICT clearly makes a huge difference in the amount of value we derive and we retain within our countries. After a highly interactive session, investors also say that if the current reforms are sustained, with the private sector playing a leading role in driving the economy, Nigeria has all it takes to attract global investors. This is the News at 10, live from Lagos. Let's shift gears again, shall we, to business news with Kaede Okikiolu. You first. First Bank. Many thanks, Kimba. And you're welcome to Business News. Unified Payments, a premier payment and financial technology company, has announced that it is now offering American Express card acceptance to merchants in Nigeria. At a formal ceremony in Lagos, the managing director of Unified Payments, Agada Pochi, said the company is delighted to be the first in West Africa to be licensed as an acquirer of American Express. Pushing the boundaries of global payment solutions as well as country pride is why top officials of Unified Payments are here. It's the formal announcement of what the financial technology company describes as another first, but a background to the story. We've been talking to American Express for the last nine years. And we have had to overcome different challenges. The very first one being to get American Express to remove our dear country, Nigeria, from their blacklist. And with the bar lifted, UP is proud to say American Express cards are now acceptable in Nigeria. Being the first organization in West Africa to be licensed as an acquirer of American Express is in our culture. You can now go to the American Express website and you can select Nigeria as a country. So we are happy to have put Nigeria on the world map. And there is a long list of beneficiary businesses. And you see the impact of this in the hotel space and hospitality space. You see it in the airline space. You now have access to a hitherto un unreachable segments because all they carry are MS card. So this is great for us. This is great for us. And of course, it sends the right signal uh, uh, globally. For the 20-year-old financial technology company, this leap is its own contribution to promote the ease of doing business policy in the country. And it adds that it will continually drive exceptional value innovations in the payment space. Let's head over to the Niger Stock Exchange, where another day of sell-off hits Nigeria's stock market as short-term investors take more advantage of the recent massive gains recorded earlier this week by high-value equities. Tosin Adesino has the details.
Hello and welcome to the stock market report. The domestic stock market fell deeper into negative territory following a spillover of profit taking by investors in bellwether equities at the close of today's trading session. The impact of the sell pressure pushed total value of listed equities below the 12 trillion naira market, while the all share index drifted further away from the 33,000 by 0.61 percent. Sell offs also dominated the consumer goods, banking, and industrial goods sectors, which contributed contributed largely to the market's downturn. Performance on the price table ended with a negative margin of 21 losers, led by ABC Transport against 13 gainers, led by First Aluminium, while Fidelity Bank retains the top spot for a second day this week on the activity chart. That's the Stock Market Report. I am Tosi Additional. Thank you, Tosi. It's a positive close for stocks and Wall Street in Europe, driven by the rally in tech stocks as investors shake off concerns over trade and political uncertainty. Here are some of the global market closing figures for Thursday. That's the business news for tonight. Thank you for watching. I am Kayode Okikiolu. You first, first bank. Go ahead on the news at 10. Europe's football governing body, UEFA, picks Germany as host of the 2024 European Championships. That's coming up on Sports News. Stay with us.